Hello and welcome to episode 79 of the Retro Slot Podcast with me, Briar Rabbit, and Jay Sniperton. How you doing, Jay? Doing okay. It's snot season. Snot season. How are you doing? Yes. We were just talking about allergies right before we went live. Itchy eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Stuffy noses, scratchy throats. Do you uh do you wear like a mask when you do yard work too? Uh like no, me? I probably should. One of my neighbors does. <laughs> Um, I've noticed, but I probably should. I do. I, I mentioned before the show, I was like, once I start getting them, I just start taking like the 24 hour. It's this non drowsy allergy medication, but it makes me drowsy. Like, it, it makes me drowsy. <laughs> if I take it, that to me, yeah. yeah. If I take Claritin in the day, it makes me drowsy for the rest of the day. So, what I learned to do is start mm -hmm. taking it like at night, right before I go to bed. And then it, you know, the drowsy part is well timed. And then I wake up and I don't have symptoms for. And then I'll just like kind of take it all the way through spring. Is it? Do you take Claritin D or just like the over the counter stuff? Um, yeah, it's just the over the counter stuff. Okay, I take Claritin D, and my it, my system does the exact opposite. It's almost like I'm taking speed. Oh, really? It I'm makes, gonna try that. Then. My, it makes my blood pressure go because well, it's got a it, you know it's got ephedrine in it, so yes. it makes my blood pressure go up. It constricts my blood vessels. It makes my heart go faster. Yeah, it's harder to pee. <laughs> oh, I don't need TMI. that. <laughs> no, it's, it doesn't feel great, but you know what? I can fucking breathe. Yeah, that's cool. So, so you got to yeah. have a prescription to get that or? No, well, we did in Oregon up until like a year ago. Oh, and it okay. was funny for like six months. There was a point in time where you could legally have like mushrooms, like right. psychedelic mushrooms and yeah. heroin and Coke without getting arrested here. Yeah. Uh, but you couldn't get Claritin. You couldn't get it. It's too hot. It's too <laughs> hot. Without, without a prescription. Yeah. So they they changed that, and they they've gone back recently on the uh, the, the the drug thing too. So yeah, that was working here. out. I heard apparently not. That stinks. They should have left the <laughs> <Not mushrooms that. laughs> alone though. <laughs> it's not like you know. It's not like I partake. It's not you know. I don't pass judgment. It was meant to help people, and it wasn't. So they changed it again. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I think you need a little more structure when you do something like yes. that, <laughs> like structure yeah. in place to help people not out not the option to pay a hundred dollars and get out of it you mean yeah you can't just drop a bomb like that and like <laughs> not expect there to be some fallout <laughs> you mean i could just pay a hundred dollars and not get in trouble sure let's do that i'm into that that's like speeding it's great <laughs> i can speed all i want i just gotta pay to do it uh, oh that reminds me did i tell you when i had jury duty did we talk about this no i i had jury duty i don't know it was whatever two months ago a month ago no we're definitely and, gonna talk about this and i got all the way to like the last the last cutoff of jury duty so they did you want group. to get on the jury a hell no i wanted to go okay. home as soon as possible i had a really bad experience my first time in jury duty like they it was a whole that's a whole nother story they like threatened to throw me in holding cell and mm -hmm. all this stuff because yeah, anyways long story i didn't do anything wrong it was just like mm -hmm. abuse of power type stuff I bet anyways that, i bet that's perspective uh, <laughs> i can tell you about it another time uh but anyways so i'm there and they like pull us into the courtroom and they start asking us questions trying to like you know pick the jurors right so i'm in the back of the room not realizing that they're doing it like you know one at a time so there was no chance i was going to get on it on on the six yeah. in any capacity based on how they were picking really because they were picking from the front going to the back and i was in the back i was like they're not gonna they're not gonna even get to me because you can only like whatever have so many vetoes and all that stuff so but they're asking us questions and all i'm thinking is don't say a word right yeah however they start asking questions and nobody else says anything yeah and i have this like Can't take inherent need i yeah no i mean like well that and you know i'm a brutally honest person if somebody asks me a direct question like they look at me and they're like hey juror number whatever yeah. What do you think about this? I'm like, all right, here we go. So <laughs> I start answering questions. And most people I see like nodding to, you know, things I'm saying like, yeah, sure. That's what I was thinking kind of stuff. But then they get to the question of, because it was, it was a case about, you know, like driving stuff, you know, like hit and run type scenario. Oh. And um, so they're asking questions, like leading questions a little bit. Like, what are your views on going over or under the speed limit? Right. And I'm like, well, you know, like five to seven is pretty 
reasonable. They're like, is that a reasonable amount? I'm like, yeah, I'd say five to seven. Reasonable if reasonable. you're a great big puss. <laughs> <laughs> well no Here, let me finish so they're like why why do you say that like explain yourself and i'm like well you know to be perfectly honest five to seven is a range where you're likely not going to get pulled over and the whole room audibly <laughs> guffawed they like gasped they couldn't they couldn't like understand why i would say that in a literal courtroom we were like sitting in the banisters of the court i'm like what are they gonna do arrest me for saying that like give me a ticket like oh this guy goes five to seven over here's a predetermined ticket no it's like the, it, 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 really there was another person who responded like no i go exactly the speed limit because that's the law i'm like you that's the law like, <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> If you ask me a question and I don't have any risk of like, you know, getting in trouble, I'm going to answer the question. I <laughs> don't I've ask only, me something you don't want to know the answer to. I've only had to go to the courthouse twice for jury duty. Usually I just like, you know, you, I don't know how it is out your way, but m my way, like you call the night before and they usually just say, you don't have to come. They wouldn't let me. I extended it like four times. I was like, I'm the primary parent during the week, yada, yada. Yeah. It's an inconvenience for us. We're both self-employed. They're like, nope, you got to come in. Nope, yeah. you got to come in. Nope, you got to come in. There was like, no. The the previous time where I got in trouble, it's because I was trying to do that. You were trying to get out of there. Because I went the first day. I'm just going to like summarize what happened. I try. I went the first day, didn't get called, and they're like, okay, so you actually have to go tomorrow again. Wait, what? Really? Across town, like 45 minutes away to the other courtroom because they need jurors. And I was like, I had like a $2,500 web design client and I had told them that, you know, it should be only one day and I can work on it tomorrow on this stuff. Yeah. So like I go home and I'm immediately calling, like leaving messages. Like I can't do it. Da -da 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 -da. It's a hardship, yada, yada. I call yeah. in the morning at 7 a.m. Courtroom opens at like eight or something. I'm like, I can't make it. They're like, you have to come in right now or we're setting a warrant out for your arrest. I'm like, yeah. catch me if you and can I, go and speed limit you pussies. Bye. <laughs> I think the words that came out of my mouth exactly were, you realize you're being a little ridiculous right now, right? That's That de-escalates every situation. <laughs> I learned, you know, I was like, whatever, Calm 24, down. 25. Because <laughs> she was like, threat. it was like threatening, like power move, threatening. I'm like, you're being a little ridiculous right now. Uh, I, I wasn't married yet, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I hadn't learned. But anyways, like, they're like, if you don't come down right now, we're sending a sheriff out to arrest you right now. I'm like, it's 45 minutes away. I'm not going to be able to get there in 15 minutes. They're like, get here. And I get there and they like, they like guide me in with the bailiff and sit me down. And just the, the judge like looked at me sternly. He's like, you sit there until I call your name. <laughs> and I had to sit through the entire trial for like nine hours. Oh. And then at the very end, he pulled me up and like, I was, I was like, I was like shaking. He's like, I could throw you in a holding cell right now. And there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. And I, you know, that's not like, an abuse. I've never been in knocker. trouble for anything. Jesus. I've never been in trouble for anything. And he's like, he brings the woman out who I'd talked to on the phone. She had told him that I was like swearing at her and I was like accosting her and all this stuff, which was a blatant lie. Yeah. And so, like, they gave me, like, I don't know if it was a misdemeanor or something. They gave me a yellow slip. Like, if, if you ever do anything like this again, you're going straight to jail. Dealing and with small like, people that have power is just a nightmare. Oh, it, it's just such so. a nightmare. You know, they they say now, like, anytime you're dealing with any situation like that is you should record your phone calls, which is, to me, a ridiculous thing. It was 2009. Yeah. Like, that wasn't. I had a, I think I had like a pocket PC phone or something at that point. It wasn't, yeah. you know, it wasn't like, like it is trail. now where you can just like, yeah, I didn't, didn't have any forethought. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. It's awful. I have a, I always thought it'd be fun to, if I actually got assigned to a jury to pretend for selection that I was a law abiding citizen, because there's no way I'm going to vote to convict. <laughs> this is just not gonna happen like this guy is gonna have to be so awful like he's gonna have to be a murderer and like there's just no way i'm gonna vote to convict in any situation <laughs> even if somebody hits a person's property and drives away 
look, it's going to have to be real cut dry. Like this guy's <laughs> yeah, yeah, an no, asshole, yeah. you know? Anyways. Anyhow, I got a little question for you. Retro video games and yeah. courtrooms. Jay, what console or system do you feel like you missed out on or you you missed completely that you you wish you could go back and like have had that experience when it was new? PlayStation. PlayStation. No kidding. You didn't. Yeah, I mean, like we I think my brother got one when he was a teenager, but like, you know, it was at the point where he's like, no, you're not. I think he would like let me watch. <laughs> really? What, would he put yeah. it in his bedroom or something? Yeah. Like no he was kidding. working and he bought it and yeah, he wanted. How old were you at the time? Uh, when did it come out? 95, 96, 90. Uh, I would have been 11. It would have oh, been 16. Okay. I wouldn't have let you touch 16. it either. <laughs> you see <those> fingers and... <laughs> I mean, me? it's not like I was chewing the cords of NES controllers until they frayed, you know, <laughs> couldn't have been me at five. How old was he? Three, whatever. How old ever I was. <laughs> I did not take care of my stuff as a kid. No, no. How old is no. your brother at the time? He was like 16. 16 oh, okay. 17. He was quite a bit older. All right. He was, that makes sense. He, it's that's it's a, when he turned into an asshole. That's an interesting... The PlayStation was a big <laughs> console, right? Because it was, it was such like a... It was a monumental leap in power, it felt like, mm -hmm. from going from like the Super Nintendo and the Genesis up to the Play, PlayStation and the Sega Saturn. Like 3D graphics. You'd seen 3D graphics, but this is the first time you really saw them. Um, but now it's like... Yeah, we, we had an N64, too, so that was like my system. Yeah. Now it's like... Looking at PlayStation games is looking at like Atari games to me. It's like... it's PlayStation 2 <laughs> is... It's when like 3D graphics Second. became like decent looking. Yeah. yeah, you know, Atari, PlayStation, same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but you know like atari for 2d graphics it's like the nes is when they got like okay right, these look pretty right. good i can still look back at them and see the art and like have fun sure. with those games yeah early early adopters did not like make out well in the video game world a lot of yeah. times yeah the playstation though, i mean, I mean it was huge success. Though, yeah i mean at the time it felt like you you, you didn't you're like oh my god it's three dimensions you know like I remember the awe that I felt playing Super Mario 64 when I first yeah. plugged it in. Yeah, it like I can remember the moment of plugging in and uh, turning it on for the first time. Yeah. Like it's a core memory for me. So my answer to this question is the same era. It's the Sega Saturn. Going back and playing mm. Sega Saturn now, I'm like, damn, I miss so much great stuff. And, you mm. know, it's so hard to go back and like really experience like a a whole library worth of games that you missed out on. Like so many sure. RPGs or like, you know, like in depth games that, you, you know, it's hard to put a hundred hours into an RPG. Right. When like final That's fantasy seven rebirth came out last week and dragon dogma two is coming out next week. It's just like hard to fit that kind of thing in. Like you can like, like a Castlevania style game where it's like, you know, more like a, a shorter experience, but, Sure, you can the Saturn is and... the one that if I could go back, I, I definitely would have picked one of those up when they were new. I remember them being like heavily discounted too, like yeah. heavily. That would have it's been ironic. Perfect. It's ironic that you say that because I have a. I, I'm not going to talk about it in the pickups, but I have a giant box of Saturn stuff out in oh. the dining room right now that I'm going to like trade or something. It, it's like a Sega Saturn console, couple of controllers the flight stick the oh, yeah. the driving wheel two large joystick pads one of them has sticky buttons mm. two like wireless controllers brand new in box and like a dozen games disc only that i got for like 180 bucks can you send me a picture of one of those flight sticks maybe <laughs> i mean like if you uh, the only problem shipping is a pain in the ass on that yeah, stuff I, I might be willing to pay for shipping for that though i mean if, those yeah i mean cool. we could we could meet in the middle somewhere That'd be cool. <laughs> um, I think they're like fifty bucks. But yeah, that that like I I played the heck out of the NES. I played the heck out of the Genesis and the Super Nintendo. Around like PlayStation and Sega Saturn and N sixty four times, I was starting to feel myself out in the world a little bit. Like I was getting mm -hmm. getting to that age where it's very girls. important for me to. <clears throat> yeah, it was girls. <laughs> 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 um 
so I just like that was that whole generation. I just didn't play as much video games as I did. I would say almost any other generation. I think the PlayStation Two was probably not as into gaming either. But um, yeah, the yeah early I didn't own a PlayStation Two either. You didn't so, own a PlayStation Two either. Mm-mm. What did you? I don't own think I had a PlayStation at the time. I didn't have a PlayStation Three until way later too. I didn't have a PlayStation Four until our Twitch community bought it for me to play Destiny because I because there was people in our community that were on place because you had oh, you're playing on xbox i was playing on xbox and the community yeah. is like well we're gonna buy you a ps4 so you have to play with us did you <laughs> have an xbox 360 i did i had xbox oh, okay. i had all the xboxes so i had oh. the original and 360 and xbox one and all that stuff yeah i mean back so in I those was... days in the xbox playstation 2 xbox 360 playstation 3 there's a lot more parody on the consoles there were some exclusives but there weren't there's a lot of shared games but yeah, there was no cross play or anything though. So it's like, you no, know, if you have true. friends and you want to play with them, you got to choose the same console. Yeah. That's it's a true. little different now, which it should be, but as, you know, as a corporation, it's not as smart, but like, you know, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't, if you're, you know, corporation at that point. Yeah. I I'm sure technically it was harder to do back in the day too when Sure. Oh. The sure. hardware was so different, so the games had to be different for each piece of hardware. Going back no, to Saturn, though, a lot PCs. of those, yeah, it's true. A lot of those games for Saturn hold up real well because they're still like you know sixteen bit, yeah, uh, yeah, side scrollers or they look real kind good. of higher res uh, RPGs and stuff like Chrono Trigger and whatnot. Yeah, it's been really fun to look at that stuff and play some of it. I've been really enjoying it. I, I'm trying real hard to not get into Saturn. <laughs> That's an expensive system. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, I'm a collector. If I'm going to get into Saturn, I'm going to end up buying them. And, yeah. like, to get mint, complete in case games and stuff, you know, most of them start at 100 bucks. Mm. <laughs> it's like you're going up to, a thou- like, between 100 and $1,000 per game. Like, Yeah, <laughs> and they're all rare. Every game yeah. on the Saturn is rare because <laughs> nobody bought one when they were new. Yeah. There are some like sports games and stuff that are not super expensive, but it's like, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, you want to start with the news? Uh, I think the first couple of yours. Oh, okay. This week. Uh, okay. So this was kind of neat. Dreamcast is <clears throat> getting a new and unofficial Star Wars game. Um, I'm not sure why they announced this because they're definitely going to get shut down, <laughs> right? Um. But it looked, I would say, not bad. Uh, there's a trailer in the article. I got this from uh, Time Extension. It's the article from mm-hmm. Time Extension. Uh, it's inspired by Rogue Squadron, uh, and it's made by homebrew developer Frogbull, the same guy who made Metal Gear Solid and Final Fantasy uh, running on Saturn. Uh, so this is, he's making a brand new game this time on the Dreamcast star, called Star Wars Dream of the Rebellion. Um I would prefer that he finished this and then popped it out so that everybody could grab it because I'm sure he's gonna mm-hmm. get he's gonna get a, a note from a lawyer pretty soon here. You think uh, Sega's gonna go after him? No, I think Star Wars is gonna go after him. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think like how often do I mean I guess they are the license holder. Uh eh. Yeah, Disney. Disney owns Star Wars. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Um, but right. yeah, I mean, if you watch the trailer for Star Wars: Dream of the Rebellion, it looks pretty neat. Like it's a cool looking game. It's like really smooth flying, almost yes. like too smooth. <laughs> <laughs> um, nice graphics. You know, still definitely Dreamcast quality. Like, I mean, there's definitely been a lot of updates to how good an X-wing fighter can look since the Dreamcast. But this is really neat. I mm-hmm. hope he gets a chance to finish it because I would like to play it. Looks like there's R two D two on the uh, oh, what are those units called? The the ones that fit into the controller. Oh, the, on the, the um, VMU? LCDs on them. Yeah, VMUs. The little there's a little R two D two on there. Yeah. Sure. Uh, next one was a little bit of sad news. So. Uh, Mr. The Mr. N64 core development has ended. Um, they they were able to get pretty far with this. Uh, about I think they said 95% of the games are playable 
uh, from the N64 on the Mister. But there's just going to be certain stuff that it's never going to work. Um, uh, Robert Pipe. I, I'm not sure if that's Pipe or Peep. It's spelled P-E-I-P. Is the developer of the N64 core. Uh, and he has said that development for the N64 has ended. The reason for this is due to some latency issues found while working on getting the cartridge interface timings correct. These latency issues are preventing further development. Uh, fortunately, less than 5% of the N64 library will be affected by these issues, but that means games like Jet Force Gemini and Conker's Bad Fur Day will remain unplayable. Um, so it's a little, a little, that's too bad. You know, like it'd be nice if they could have gotten that up to 100%. Um, but still, there's a ton of N64 games you can play on the Mister. Yeah, it seems usable for most. My question is, in the eventuality in 2029, when Analog finally comes out and releases the, the N64, yeah, if that will change things for the Mister. For the Mister, I don't know, because I would assume that it, while both are running on FPGA, I'm sure the hardware will be different between the two FPGAs. Sure. Um, and I wonder if maybe uh, we have a story about Mars later on, but I wonder if Mars right. will be able to handle sure. N64 a little easier or if this will be a deeper problem. Yeah, it's know. not a hardware we'll problem. All right. Um, yeah, that is sad. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Uh, there are some new Switch Online games as of, like, whatever uh, week ago for Mario Day. Yeah, it's a banger. So they have, story. yeah, uh, if you're a handheld fan, Dr. Mario. They already had the NES one on there, but this is the Game Boy one. And then they have Mario Golf for Game Boy Color, which is a, like, story-based yeah. golf game. It's a very good game. Should go on the Switch. <laughs> like, they should remake that. Yeah, I don't think should. there's any other Mario Golf games that are story-based really like that, are they? Like, like true RPG story-based? No, there's a story about this game and Mario Tennis, that why they're both RPGs for the Game Boy Color. I can't remember what that story is. Maybe we should pick one of these games for a weekly, for an episode and get a little more into depth to that. So the developer developed both of these games. Was it Camelot, maybe? <clears throat> that sounds right. That sounds right. So, yeah, you can play those if you have the cheaper Switch Online, I believe. It's not the expansion pass. Awesome. Um, talking about remakes... They also announced on Mario Day that they're going to be coming out. I think they already announced the Paper Mario Thousand Year Door remake, but they announced the date. So it'll be May 23rd, which is two months from now. It's like 60-ish days, 65 days. Oh, wow. A remake? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, well, for the Switch. So it's basically they're making it with like HD graphics and stuff. I don't think it's like a... Maybe this is a remaster. Okay. Okay. Uh, thousand year. I think thousand year doors a remaster, and then they also announced Luigi's Mansion. Luigi Ma Luigi's Mansion Two HD. I think is the remake because that was originally on. Is it 3DS? The second uh, Luigi's Mansion. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. I haven't played any of the out Luigi's June. Mansion games, and I feel like I'm missing out a little bit on those. They do have Luigi's Mansion 3 on the Switch, and then um, the original one on GameCube. And then, yeah, I think the second one is on the 3DS, if I don't, if I'm remembering correctly. AJ, uh, there's been yeah. a ton of rumors about the Switch 2 coming out. Uh, I think it's been kind of, the rumor is it's been delayed out of 2024, but probably coming out in 2025. Are you excited about a Switch 2? Do you care? Do you, do you play a lot of Switch? I will be excited if at least one of the two things happen where it stays backwards compatible, which I think it should, right? So. They're keeping the switch name. Um, secondly, one of the thoughts that I had, and, and I've heard other people talk about it too. Like what if they implemented the ability to play 3ds games or DS games on it as That'd well? Be nice. <laughs> I mean, you know, I think about the form factor, do it, but it'd be nice if they did. The, well, the fact that they like discontinued the support for the the traditional handhelds, like why not allow them to? I mean, I guess there's then you'd have there'd be no reason from a business there'd be no reason from a business standpoint to do it because they're like we're not going to be selling new games, so yeah, it's never going to happen. But and they'd have to put um, two screens on the device. It's true. It's true. Good point. Um, 
Yeah, so just make it backwards compatible. Like, what else are they going to do with it, realistically? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> to me, I mean, you never know. Nintendo has come up with some pretty screwball ideas, and some of them they've knocked out of the park, and some of them haven't gone off too well. You know, see Wii, see Switch, see Virtual Boy, see Wii 2, or Wii U. Yeah, you know, they you, need you to stay away from 3D. Don't bring 3D to the Switch. Just stop. <laughs> but, I mean, a lot of people, including me, would be happy just for... Uh, more power, possibly mm -hmm. longer battery life, um, and something like uh, 4K upsampling, so they look a little stuff looks a little sharper on a sure. you know a living room TV. Which I mean, most people are probably 4K these days in their living room. Yeah, 4K sounds pretty feasible for sure. I mean, haven't even haven't they said that it's going to be 4K at least on the TV? I don't know. <laughs> probably not on the probably not on the handheld. It won't be displaying at 4K, but I don't see any reason to make it 4K on the handheld. Like I don't think your no. eyes can really see that. No. <laughs> what do you mean? I can see it. <laughs> I have it right up against your face. I can see the pixels. Uh, small story. Lego. I think on Mario Day they also announced that they're gonna have Lego Mario Kart stuff. And all I could think of was, what if they made a like a full size kit? Like Lego Mario Kart that you could sit in. I was like, that'd be dumb, but also cool at the same time. Wait, like a full size cart? That you I don't think that's what they're in? doing, but I'm I was just imagining because this picture is kind of ominous, and it I'm not sure if that's big or small. The, the one that small, says "Ready, actually. Set, Build." Yeah, it's a small, it's a small thing. So I think they're do bringing like the world of Mario Kart to Lego. Basically, is what they're doing. Do you think there's going? So you think there's going to be? They're going to make like like mario kart sets that you can build yes. with like yes Similar it's to the not mario gonna set. be like yeah. something like like what they did with forza where they made like a lego world that you could race uh, in. i don't i don't think so no okay i'm i'm kind of okay with either but i think i'd prefer or like a game that was that was yeah, like a game That'd that was cool. like kind of mario kart cross lego I mean, they already did. What was that uh, 2K game that released? Was it Lego Racing? Um, like a few months ago? Six months yeah, ago? I can't remember the name of it. But yeah, it was. But they did a Forza that was Lego as well. That was amazing. Yeah. And they just did that Hot Wheels game too. Not Lego related, but still like there's there's fun you can have with like toys, bringing toys to video games. It's weird because like 10 years ago, they were bringing like video games or toys to video games, but they're like making the toys in real life and you'd like put them on platforms and stuff yep. to get them in the video game. And the C chip stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm interested. What do you got? I'm, I'm probably not going to buy any Lego. So my kids are kind of aging out of that. Oh yeah. If you read more of the story too, they're showing like a booze castle made out of Lego and like a Bowser's train made out of Lego. So, yeah, it does seem to be going in that direction where they're going to have like a Mario yeah. Kart Lego set. My my kids don't love I mean, my daughter loves the sets like of the Disney princesses and stuff. But the problem mm -hmm. is a lot of these like the Super Mario sets are really expensive for mm -hmm. not very many pieces. And a lot of them aren't even Lego pieces. They're just like manufactured Mario style figures that are like, you know, like hand size almost. They yeah. just kind of set on the. They, I don't know. It's weird. It's not like you're building a Mario. You know what I mean? Like you just pull this thing out of a box and it's anyways, but it's kind of interactive and high tech and all that stuff. Yeah. So the next story I was going to, this was like the discussion topic that I was going to put, but I was like, it's in the news. Um, there's a bunch of new nominees for the video game hall of fame from the, what, what, what is the museum called? The, um, okay. The strong national museum of play. So you can go vote until the 21st on the nominees and uh i'll just quickly run down the list here we yeah. have asteroids we're, we're picking too <laughs> yeah asteroids elite guitar hero metroid mist neopets resident evil sim city wow. uh toki memorial don't know what that game is uh tony hawks pro skater ultima and you don't know jack first of all give me your top three wow that's tough man top three out of this list is tough Let's vote between a top, uh, like between a. I mean, asteroids. 
is got to be there. Elite seems like it's got to be there. Resident Evil seems like it's got to be there. Sim City, how do you pass by Sim City? How do you pass by Metroid? How do you pass by Tony Hawk? Like, I don't see a weak point on this list, honestly. Mm -hmm. Neopets, I, I don't have any. Like, Neopets, Togemeki Memorial, I saw the, the video about last year, and it seemed like a great game, but I'm never going to play it. I've never played Ultima. So Neo a lot Pets, of these are like Togemeki revolutionary. Yeah. A lot of these are like, they're not just like, they're, 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 they're like the beginning of, of their genre. Yeah. They're not just great games. They're like revolutionary. Like Asteroids may not changers. be in my opinion, but um, I think to a lot of people it would be just, just because there were so many similar arcade style games. Yeah. But that was the one that made that, I think. Right. That was the was first. Asteroids the first, like yeah. not Space Invaders or uh, Asteroids was bomb. different than Space like, Invaders. I know, but it was like the like the shooting kind of. Yeah. Anyways, people are gonna castrate me for that, but like Guitar Hero, you know, it was the first of the the music games. Yeah, and the guitar controller just made it so engaging. Right. Right. Tony Hawk Pro Skater is pretty big for me too because of how it connected. Um, video games with real life skaters and stuff like that, and you could kind of emulate that. There wasn't a lot of that kind of thing then. Yeah, I, I would, I would make an argument. I think an argument could be made anyway that that's a, one of the strong reasons why PlayStation was so successful was because you had such a pop culture tie-in game like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater with like modern music and like it was on N sixty four as well skating. Yeah, but I mean nobody. You want the PlayStation version, though. <laughs> I played it on 64. It had all the music in it. It's not like... Did it have it was, all the music? It had all... Well, I'm pretty sure it had all the music in it. <laughs> but you know what I mean, though. It's like it was such like a revolutionary kind of like... It was so cool, too. It was just cool. It played well. It was massively pop, pop culture tie-in. It was really something special. Have you watched the Tony Hawk documentary? The one on... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so... It, it keys in on how monumental that game was for him and, and skating like skating was on a decline at the time. Like for anybody who hasn't seen the documentary just quickly, you know, he was, he Tony Hawk was so revolutionary for the sport because of how he skated. Right. He did it differently because he was smaller and he had to, but um, he went on tour and he was making a lot of money and he was spending it very quickly. And then like the next year it was all gone. Like he had nothing. He's like, we were like living month to month again and all this stuff. And then they, uh, THQ or whoever approached him and they, they pitched this idea to him and he's like, yeah, sure. Whatever. And then when they released it, they brought him his first royalty check and it was like over a million dollars or something like that. His <laughs> first check. And he was just Score. like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I, I don't know like that's a cool story to me and then of course you know something like resident evil is so yeah important to the horror genre but it's not really my cup of tea but still i know a lot of people recommend if i gotta pick the games to mean most to me and i gotta go top three though it's metroid sure. tony hawk and resident evil i think tony hawk is the one that we have in common for me i would i would just i guess for me personally i'd probably have to go guitar hero and sim city mm. That's, those are great picks, too, man. Honestly, more rock band than Guitar Hero, but Guitar Hero is the one that started it. Yeah, and I fucking love some Sim City. Yeah, I did. You play? I played it on. I think I played it on PC and then also on SNES a little bit. Yeah, I played it on PC mostly. PC was way better. <laughs> like for a game like that, I don't think I ever played it on that on a Super <laughs> Nintendo. I wouldn't know. It's it's like super zoomed in. Like you have to use the controller to scroll around. It's not ideal. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, not right, only I, did I love the game, but I have fond memories playing it. <laughs> you know, of sure, like who sure. I played it with. You know, what were you pro destruction or were you trying to avoid? Oh that? no, no way! I'm trying to build like the <laughs> ultimate utopia where yeah, right everybody Please. pays the most taxes possible without working themselves to death. <laughs> Got it. You without were, moving you profit. <laughs> Yeah, that's I mean, I what that's what destroyed our, our civilization was SimCity. It breeded a whole bunch of money, power hungry capitalists. 
<laughs> trying to profit as much as they possibly could. So, take SimCity off the list. <laughs> yeah, fuck SimCity. They're banned. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, that's. I mean, that is a strong list. That's every every game on that list is a banger. I hope. How, do you know what the rules are? Can they all get in? No, you have to vote. God, how I don't do you know vote if you vote. That? I don't know if you vote for one. If you had to vote for one, what would you do? One vote per day is what it says. Oh, oh, like regular people are voting on this. <laughs> regular people, yes, the public, yeah. Uh, and it says final inductees will be revealed on Thursday, May 9th. Oh, plural inductees. I think they normally do like three or four per okay. ballot. Three. The three games that receive the most public votes we submitted on one ballot. Last so year, think... Golden I got in, as well as Wii Sports. Yeah, I mean, Wii Sports should have. You think about the way that it connected everybody and all that stuff it was pretty pretty crazy yeah it was as simple as it is game. right like yeah everybody wanted to play wii sports yeah that's true. like everybody did want to play wii sports for i remember for 20 whole minutes <laughs> <laughs> while drinking right yeah, while, you know, while, the same goes for rock band except you wanted to play for rock true longer. <laughs> true we, we had a lot of uh i was the i was the guy i was the video game guy because we had uh i had three roommates and so they were all three in college i wasn't and so they had their like college parties or whatever on the weekends and so we'd invite people over and i was the one that owned the tv the big like 42 inch plasma which you know in 2006 2007 i was like that was like baller right plasma is still inch plasma. Are awesome <laughs> yeah and so and then i got the wii like right when it was released and so everybody would come over and have some drinks and play wii bowling we had we had a one of our roommates could sit down and bowl consistent 300s yeah. just by flicking his wrist tear one <clears throat> pour one out for plasma though. you know my wife i had a baller plasma it was a 50 inch pioneer curo it was expensive i bought that thing when i was i had single dude money you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> same same. <laughs> i had to replace it eventually because it was just like you know it just was so outdated mine's like, it was still going thick. yeah mine i'm it's sure mine is still too it's but i'm not sure pounds. because my mother or my my wife gave it away she gave it away for free <laughs> i was so bad don't touch my shit mom <laughs> mm -mm. Not my mother. My wife did that. My wife did that. All right. So, uh, What's next? Sorry. Somebody in chat wanted the list of the ballot. Just give me a sec. All right. Next on the news, there's a couple here. Oh, no. This one's a big story. The 94 Street Fighter movie is free to watch on YouTube right now in the U.S. I know what I'm doing tonight. Also, you should Not go read that the piece of shit. Can we? Can I? <laughs> was, listen, I was so ninety four. I was nine years old. This movie was amazing. <laughs> no, it was not. Me. It was. Not it was amazing. like <laughs> it was like the original Super Mario Brothers. It was my, you know, the game. I Super, Street Fighter Two. Before we owned our Super Nintendo, the only way that we got to play Super Nintendo is if we got A's and B's on our report card. And our reward was to go to Blockbuster and rent the system for the weekend. And we got yeah. one game to play. Yeah, the and best one. we had, my brother and I had to agree on it. <laughs> like, what was the only game that we could agree on? It was yeah. Street Fighter 2. That was yeah. the only game we ever, and we did this like for Riddick a year. Riddick Bow Boxing. <laughs> <clears throat> I think I ended up getting the Super Nintendo like the next year for Christmas or something like that, but. Um, so yeah, Street Fighter is like the one that was the the first game that I pretty much played on Super Nintendo. Yeah. Uh, so this movie, it when it came out, there. it was cathartic to me to, you know, like I felt it, it felt validating to me to have something like this out. Yeah. Um, and then also it's, you know, amongst the same time as like, well, not we were also watching Bloodsport and all that kind of stuff, of course, as nine year olds, totally yes. normal. Um, <laughs> and so, but the, I thought it was interesting. They talked about how difficult it was to make this movie. And there's oh, a quote. It was awful. From, I'm guessing, the director, uh, uh, D'Souza. I don't know. Is that the director? Yes. Screenwriter. 
director and screenwriter writer Stephen E. D'Souza. Uh, he said, I couldn't talk about it at the time, but I can now. Jean Claude was coked out of his mind. Yes. The studio <laughs> had hired a Wrangler to take care of him, but unfortunately, the <laughs> Wrangler himself was a bad influence. He ended up being his Coke dealer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, but well, you know more about this story than I do. Jean Claude was calling in sick so much I had to keep looking through the script to find something else to film. I just couldn't sit around for hours waiting for him. On two occasions, the producers allowed him to go to Hong Kong, and both occasions he came back late. On Mondays, he just wasn't there at all. Yeah, it's like the Mario Bros. situation all over well, again. Yeah, where they were just drunk the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. there like a documentary about this that I missed out on? There are. There are several. <laughs> and they're all good. They're all it's all it's always better to watch those than to watch the actual movie. The movie is only good. Well, there's two reasons the movie is good. One, Raul Julia is legitimately just fun to watch in this movie. Like he just kills it. Is as that bison? Bison, yeah. That it literally says in this article that uh or no, somebody in the comments said that his um rendition of bison still holds up. It's Something it's just comments. it's completely over the top. It's entirely it's very very quotable, and he just you can tell that he's having a ton of fun doing this right like right now. <laughs> Sadly, yeah. he was extremely sick while he was doing it with stomach cancer, and it was mm. the last movie he ever made. He died shortly after. Um, but the other reason is it's just so bad that like you just watch it, you're just like oh, like you're having fun, just like making fun of how bad it is. Yeah, well, it's like the original Mortal Kombat movie is similar, too. What are you talking about? That's a great movie. Oh, well, that's what I think about all three of them. <laughs> they weren't critically acclaimed by any means, but they were fun to watch. The first, first Mortal Kombat movie is like 9 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> you got, I don't know. Anyways. Uh, so we had talked a couple of weeks ago. You remember that scenario of the guy who almost sold the really expensive Zelda on eBay for 17 yes. grand. Yeah. It ended up selling not for 700, like some thought, but for $288,000. That's game changing money right there. It's still. Yeah. Like you put that money. You, you play with that money correctly. That's your retirement right there. The guy yeah. that originally bought it for 17 K before he, the, the sale got canceled is pissed. Yeah. Well, too fucking bad. <laughs> Uh, sucks to suck loser yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i see myself in that person which is why i'm conflicted like i like i see both sides because i've yeah. been in that i've been in that scenario where i buy something get a great deal on it and then they just cancel it yeah. for whatever reason i'm i'm fine if they're like i you know if they're honest and like hey i learned that this is worth much more and i'm you know we need it like i i'm not going to be an asshole but if they yeah. lie to me you know and they're like oh i i misplaced it it's no longer here or, you know, like I just get annoyed by that kind of thing. I just want people to be honest is all. Uh, this is a little story. <clears throat> I figured since you like final fight, I you can buy like these fight. like opposable final fight characters. They're like, they almost look like, uh, like teenage mutant Ninja turtle figures for yeah. 24 bucks. They're about four inches tall each. Pretty good. The looking. original final fight characters. Uh, take note of, you know, I was like, maybe we should do Final Fight soon, because we haven't. We haven't done Final Fight yet. That's right. Mm -hmm. I like these do. characters. I, I don't I, know if we've done any, many, if any, brawlers in general. We did honest. Streets of Rage, right? Didn't we? We probably did. Long time oh, ago. Let me consult the list. But I might <laughs> I might pick up a Hagar. That's pretty cool. We did Streets of Rage 2. Oh, really? We didn't do the first one first? Like a, like a year and a half ago, I'm guessing. Oh. Two years ago. Wow. Oh. We have not done the first one. I no. feel like we've been uh, doing that show for that long, does it? When uh, I look at this list, I'm like, damn, 2019? We've done a lot of games. No, wait, no, 2021. It was like September of 21, wasn't it? Wow. It's 2024 now. I know. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. 79 episodes, 26 episodes a year at best. Yeah. Win. <laughs> 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 let's do some math here <laughs> uh, i might order a hagar i like that yeah that's cool i mean like he's he's been in a bunch of games we've talked about too he was in uh the one that we did last or two episodes ago oh, yeah, Saturday, Saturday Night Night masters. masters yeah cool. so he's, it's topical who's making these 
That's a good question. Uh, 52 Toys, Chinese 52 toy manufacturer. Toys. Okay. Yeah. So am I going to have to import it for like equal the cost of the figure? Yeah, probably. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, next story. There's a few left. So the director or the writer, excuse me, the writer of Mandalorian, Thor, Cowboy Bebop, or a writer from, from those, is working on the new live-action Pac-Man movie. Christopher Yo Yost, Yost. And he also worked on, like, Marvel movies and stuff. You would not think that a live-action Pac-Man movie would, would be very good. No, you but, would would you? Like, <laughs> I mean, it makes it sound interesting. I think they reference, like, the new Sonic movies and stuff, which are actually objectively good movies not amazing but they're good but he did also work or the pac-man movies based on an original idea by light beams chuck williams who also produce uh was a producer on the sonic the hedgehog movies so you know <clears throat> things are pointing to the new pac-man movie being good and i imagine it's gonna be kind of like sonic where pac-man's this animated character in a real world scenario and he's getting chased by ghosts and all this stuff that's Pac-Man is like, just a blank slate, though, right? As long as you f figure out a way to get him and ghosts in there somehow, somehow, like you can go and anywhere balls. with this, right? Because there's, there's like, there's, there's no story at all no. to Pac-Man. There's no backstory. There's no lore. There's nothing. It's like you can just do whatever you want with this. Well, there's a little bit of story, like in like manuals and stuff, right? About Pinky and Blinky is and there? all the ghosts, the ghosts. I, mean, I don't know, like mini backgrounds kind of. Anyways, looked interesting. I, I hope imagine... they do like a gritty war movie. For... Yeah. <laughs> Tell my wife I love her. Fucking yeah. <laughs> Pac-Man is like the the stand-in for like the the imperial bad guys and like the ghosts are actually like the he comes fighting. out with a little like mustache. Like guerrilla um, warriors like fighting day to day trying to get by. Yeah, like a real gritty kind of. Pinky and uh, the blue one are in love, but Pinky dies horribly, and the blue <laughs> one goes on this horrible rampage. <laughs> Man, now we're talking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you said the Street Fighter movie was bad. Uh, <laughs> we mentioned the Mars FPGA earlier. There's there was an update for anybody curious. They had originally said, um, that like by quarter one of this year things yeah. should be like launching and stuff but you know it's that was optimistic but now they're saying they're going to be showing it off in june and that you know things are going according to plan but as i looked at this article from time extension there apparently has been a bunch of drama oh so much drama around the mars fpga like people blocking each other on twitter and all like content creators being weird about stuff and I don't I don't know much about it other than like, you know, it's not that serious people. I don't know, like it's tough. Yeah. I don't but, know, you know who started the drama, but I know everybody's real upset about it and people are like sandbagging this thing like it's never going to come out and other people are like, you know, you know, typical drama where you're getting blocked, who knows who's lying. Everybody's got a like, different who, story. Who's got like stock in Mr. or something? Like who, I don't know. So weird. Uh, uh, yeah, Con I don't know. Console it, war type stuff, basically. Yeah, yeah. It, it it might be something like that, honestly, because the people who do stand a profit from the success of Mister, and there are people who do do are in that position, could be just trying to sandbag the Mars project because they're not going to be able to profit off Mars like they did Mister because Mister was open source and this is very much like a you know, like a releasing product, like a closed platform product, not a closed platform, but like a, you know, one company is going to make this thing and release it. Yeah. I don't it's, know. It's, I, don't, I don't know who to believe. And I, I can't say I honestly care to find out. I'm just looking to see when this thing comes out and how good, what it supports when it does. Yeah. It's estimated retail will be $699, which is, you know, nothing to sneeze at, but that's a lot of it money. Does everything but... that it's, if it says everything that it's, pledging to do then it's going to basically you know undercut the mr 4k as well by quite a bit right 
I've never heard of this Mr. 4K. <laughs> what is this? Or, I'm not sorry. I'm not thinking about the Mr. 4K. Uh, what was it? The the Retro Tank 4K. Yeah, well, the Retro Tank is just a scaler. It's not a. That's a different device. That you well, plug a, a you plug an NES or a Super Nintendo into right. a Retro Tank, and you get yeah. a 4K output or an ultra sharp. I understand output. that part. I just I still think that. I don't know. As an FPGA console that does the same thing yeah it does have a different use for it but for me as somebody who would be choosing between one or the other potentially i'd probably be going with the cheaper one that does the same output i don't know maybe not maybe i'm just speaking out my ass probably uh atari apparently after 25 years i believe is going back into the arcades with they have like this recharged series of uh, arcades cabinets how many are they doing i think it's like is it 10 i don't remember how many they said they were gonna do when's the last um, time you've been to an arcade a barcade yeah but it was a while ago like yeah more than five years ago yeah well i went yeah a few times last year to a barcade that opened up sort of near me uh, and it, it was pretty fun, but it mostly old games. So I was gonna say, stuff, question yeah. is, do you want to play new games in a barcade, or do you want to play old games, or do you want? Um, both? well, I did bring my kids to uh, Dave and Buster's. I think it was last year, it might have been the year before, for their birthday, and they had new games there, and some of the new games were pretty fun, honestly. They had a Mario Kart, a new Mario Kart arcade game. Yeah, I've seen that. Which is pretty fun. I have There's a hard a time. I don't Pac know why. game that was really fun, which is four player simultaneous. Yep. Like versus, yep. The big, the really big screen. Yeah. So I, I have a hard time though, because we, we've been to arcades like that, you know, Chuck E. Cheese and all those kind of things. But I have a hard time when you go to an arcade that has prizes. I'm not wasting my money on machines that don't have tickets. Like <laughs> I just, no. I'm a degenerate gambler <laughs> and I have this thing in my head. <laughs> Where I have to be the one that's winning the jackpots to get the kids shit that they're going to throw away. Yeah. yeah. That's like the last place I'll go in an arcade, right? Is I'll, I'll end up there with kind of like, okay, I'm kind of bored. I'm ready to go. How much tokens do I have left? Let's chuck them in the, uh, the ball toss or whatever. And we'll buy some shitty fucking stuffed animal with the tickets left <laughs> on the way out. <laughs> No, I'm like looking for machines that I can profit from, yeah. basically. There's a few that I can consistently win jackpots on. Again, I am a degenerate gambler, and I like the feeling of winning jackpots. It's why I do eBay, to be honest. Yeah. It's the same same thing, but less destructive. I, I really like the games that we could play kind of together, preferably uh, co-op as opposed to versus, mm -hmm. like right next to each other, like shoulder to shoulder, whether it's like, a gun game or like yeah the pac-man game was kind of versus but it was still fun uh there's a bunch they still have a bunch of like big gun games where you stand there mm -hmm. and like blast away at the screen or all sorts of stuff like that there's also this really cool reflex game where it's like got buttons like i don't know maybe a grid of 20 by 20 buttons on the wall and they light up and you gotta like hit them in the sequence that they light up as fast as you can like a boxing tool yeah, that was really fun. My kids whipped me at that one. <laughs> whipped me. You mean you're old and have slower reflexes? I know who could have thought who who would have got to imagine, <laughs> but to see it like to see it like proven statistically like that. Is... <laughs> Objectively speaking, yeah. yes, you can't talk. You can't talk to, anymore. To see it measured. <laughs> Oh, there's like numbers like I got that number and yours was that much better than mine. Yeah. Uh, maybe when the kids get older and they're less enamored with like stuff, uh, they'll want to play like things like that. Because I don't really want our seven year old playing, you know, murderous gun games and stuff at the moment. But yeah, well, like the Mario uh, Kart and stuff like that. Too. Yeah, it's true. He does like the racing games, actually. The the like steering wheel ones. He's done that yeah. a bit. I used to like those as a kid, too. Yeah, so the, the game one that... is really good too. I, th I can't remember what's called like versus me. Yeah, I think I took a it's huge. These machines are like they're they're doing individual cabinets for each each game, which I don't know if that's a good call or a bad call to be honest. Uh, they they're having 
who's this company? I forgot. They're a par- they're partnering with Allen One Inc. The manufacturer, mm-hmm. and the games that they're redoing, they they're all uh, colon or semicolon recharged on all these. But they have Berserk, Quantum, which I don't know if I've heard of Quantum, Caverns of Mars, Asteroids, Centipede, Black Widow, Breakout, Gravatar, Missile Command, and Yars. Oh, so they're bringing back their Which classic franchises. Yeah. But they're all recharged, so they're going to be, like, updated. Yeah. Whatever, re- recreated games. So, sounds kind of like what they did on that Atari collection, where they like kind of updated some of the older stuff. Sure. That's neat. Cabinets are very, like, 2024 looking, too. Yeah, they look they're great. Not, like, cla- they're not classic looking at all. Yeah, big flat screen, widescreen things. Some are four, four players wide. Cool. My, yeah, my question is, like, who's the market for this? Just well, like David Busters and Chuck E. Yeah. Cheese. Oh, man. I just, all right, I'm sorry <clears throat> I keep going off on these tangents today, but I just watched a documentary about the Chuck E. Cheese on YouTube, and it was fascinating. Chuck E. Cheese used to be kind of adult-themed. Where Chucky was like kind of this Bronx kind of foul mouthed kind of like rat. Really? <laughs> yeah. And he'd kind of like, he'd make like lewd jokes and like the rest of the cast was kind of like, you know, like something you'd see in like a, like a, like 1940s comedy movie where it's a little bit risque, but it's not like too over the top. But yeah. And they changed it when, uh, I guess their competitor bought the, bought Chucky e. Cheese. And they like redid it and made it. They enhanced all the animatronics to make like the band. Right, I remember opposed, that as a kid. And yeah. they, they made it much more family friendly. It was really weird though. I'll have to find that. We go to Chuck E. Cheese once every few months. They yeah. Costco has like you know seventy five dollars for a hundred dollars gift cards and stuff. So we do that, and the pizza is actually solid. That's the one thing. That Chuck E. Cheese has is the pizza is actually solid. They have like garlic butter on the crust or something. I've never thought you were lying to me more than I do right now. No, I'm serious. <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese pizza is like, actually pretty legit. Say what you will about 7 Eleven, but the pizza's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> but the one thing that I have a problem with at Chuck E. Cheese, um, the fights, like every, everything, <laughs> everything's mostly fine, but something, uh, I don't know when it happened, but their prizes are so horrible it's like dollar store it's like lower than dollar store tier stuff yeah it's like you have a little dollar store sticker pack for three thousand tickets like it it's abysmal anything decent is like ten thousand tickets or something it's like a, a chinese company is looking at what's in the dollar store and say so we can bad. make that we can we can rip this off <laughs> dude it is horrible so like Whenever we go, I'm like, what is anything even decently remotely close to? Yeah. The, it's like, and then you got to play like ski ball for 48 hours straight to earn like anything that's. <laughs> well, they have like, they have like candy. You can get like lollipops and stuff like that. I'm like, that's objectively yeah. like not horribly priced, but it's candy. Um, but like any of the toys and stuff are just like junk. It's like really bad plastic dollar store stuff. Yeah. Anyways. That's my only real problem with Chuck E. Cheese at the moment. That's true with Dave and Buster's too. No, David Bu- Dave and Buster's has legit stuff though. They usually have like you know electronics and games and systems and really like a wide Everything variety of candy and all junk. sorts of stuff. Oh, okay. <laughs> maybe the ones that I've been to are different, but or maybe um, I just had like junk not enough tickets. tickets. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, if you have 15 tickets, you're not getting anything good there, yeah. big guy. <laughs> Uh, the last story is, you know, the, the epilogue Game Boy operator, they're coming out with an yeah. SNES version. I'll buy that at some point. Yeah. They, um, I don't think they've announced when, but they're working on it currently. And then they also said they want to make a NES version, but there's nothing official yet. I'll, I'll buy both of those. I think my epilogue is really neat. I've, I've actually played with it quite a bit, just kind of messing around with it. And it's mm-hmm. just a very cool thing. It's nice for like transferring saves and stuff. Yep. Yep. Especially if you have multiple cool platforms to, you know, whether you have a mister or putting it back on the cart or playing ROMs on a computer or whatever, like using the same save files. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I hope they do a Genesis one too, honestly. 
be cool. They have the the retroed is yep. very similar, and that has Genesis built in as is well. Is that the same Xbox. company? I don't not, know. I don't think it is. It can't I had a retro and I ended up selling it because I was like, I'm not using this. this. Yeah. Yeah, I don't do that, sadly. And that's why I got like boxes and boxes of this shit that I should probably put on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I sold a bunch of stuff on eBay like last fall, but it's just so much work. It is. Yeah, I, that's, I've, been, I've been knee deep in it the last few months for sure. Yeah, I bet. Is All that right. it for news? Yep. That's all that's the main There's a lot of news. There was honestly. other stuff. There was other stuff too, but I was like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you think of one of my childhood favorite games in Chavez slash Riddick Bow Boxing? I'm gonna be honest with you, Jay. I was incredibly impressed by this game. Uh it does not, I don't think, make a strong impression like from the get-go. Uh, but once you actually start playing it and like trying to understand what what is actually happening here. I'm like, holy cow, this is like a legit boxing simulator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, holy smokes. Yeah, um, and, the, and the opponents are hard to like, there's no, it's not like punch out where they have a specific rhythm no, that they do and timing game. and all that stuff. Yeah. No. Yeah, it's like their it's, strategy. It's, it's, you have a ton of different moves at your command, like, you know, high, low jabs. You got hooks. You got uppercuts. You got body blows. You got just like a ton of different moves you can block you can move around the ring to try and like mm -hmm. gain an advantage that way it's it, it's pretty it's responsive surprisingly you know? in-depth boxing simulator i wish that the uh because basically after each match you get to choose an upgrade for your character and it's i i played through chavez i actually didn't plug in riddick Bo because it's the exact exact same game so i yeah. i don't know actually what they were labeled so maybe you can tell me i, I know it was like strength speed or yeah chin something like that um like how hard it is to knock you down i think stamina but I you think. choose yeah you choose um you choose either like weighting it one way or the other or you can do like kind of an even split across all three and then and then also when you create your boxer you can kind of choose their strengths and weaknesses as well as, as well as their look scale. like you can change the way they look yes there's it you know within the preset it's not like you're doing custom character stuff but that was not i was able to Super take nintendo no, no. So, and this game, uh, I, I watched a few reviews today as well, and they they made callbacks to the developers of the greatest heavyweights as well as the Holyfield boxing games on Genesis. Yep. Which is kind of like the infancy of this game. So it's like they it it had the the boxers, but they used more realistic sprites for those games, and they had like the the head and body tracker, and then the, like the stamina bar and stuff like that. And the way that movement happened was very similar, but it was like slower. And um, things like that, but campaigns similar. But the Chavez and Riddick Bow boxing version of it is probably like the the top tier of that style uh, for the developers was these two games. And Riddick Bow is also a Game Boy and Game Gear game, which they're not amazing, but they're okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but Chavez was not because Chavez, it's the same game. They were released at the same time. Chavez was in the uh, Spanish Mexico market. And Riddick Bow was in the U.S. market. I don't. I don't even know if it went to Japan or Europe. To be honest, um, actually, I think it went to Japan. I think Bow went to Japan. And it's the same game, just you know, they they changed the like cutscenes or whatever. There's like little messages that pop up, and then the like color and a couple of the like strengths and weaknesses of the characters were a little different. But overall, the experience is the exact same, other yeah. than language. Yeah, there's like a there's kind of like just uh you can do like a a match against any of the characters you can do a two-player match and there's also mm -hmm. this pretty deep career mode where you, like you said you create a character and then you don't just like go through like um like a tree of like people you select who your opponent's gonna be as you work your way toward people, the yeah. championship and the more matches you have your fighter ages and you can yeah. You can lose the game because you you just fought too many easy opponents and you never worked your way up to the championship, which I thought was pretty incredible. I didn't get that far in the game. That's something I <laughs> that's something I read about the game because one thing about the game is the the round the matches are twelve it takes rounds a while and it takes yeah. a, a a good while. Like each you you really feel you really feel like you're in a battle with this guy because 
I, I don't know. Maybe if you get good at the game, you can knock guys out faster. I'm, I'm sure you can, right? Like as you, I was getting get better. Uh, my, I think my first one it took six rounds, and then that was like five, and then four, and then three. Okay, the so yeah, you can. I, I never got to that point where I was knocking people out like that. But what was happening was I was just like, I was throwing like a hundred punches and landing half of them. Mm -hmm. And then over the course of like four or five rounds, like you, you between each round, you, you both get a certain amount of your stamina back up to a certain level. Like kind of your part of your health bar gets gray and can't be filled up. But it, right. I don't know. I, I was pretty impressed with the whole thing because it, it really kind of brought this like, this is a, a marathon, not a sprint kind of feeling mm. to this. Like, I got to manage how many th punches I'm throwing. It's not like a fighting game like Street Fighter where I'm just, like, going nuts with the offense. I got to really, like, manage my fighter here. Mm. I, I was pretty impressed by the whole thing. It, it's like, it's, the mechanics are simple, right? Yeah. But, but paying attention and watching the person you're fighting and knowing when to punch, go up or down, do body shots or head shots and all that stuff. Yeah. Um. It is incredibly like interesting how you know much you have to pay attention and how diverse each fighter feels too. Yeah. As much as they look very similar, they all like kind of fight differently. Some are like throwing punches all the time, some are blocking more. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't get a feel for like are there like certain boxers that have like combinations that you can come to recognize and like you know know how to 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 block into to counter or not but i mean i was i was impressed by the game i noticed overall. like certain fighters do more routines almost they're like they're like up for a few go down for a few and then uppercut and then they like block for a second you know they it happens a little bit but then like the time that you start to to like go with it then they like do the opposite you know what i mean <laughs> so it's um anyway so i i wanted to kind of tell the story of like how i came to know because chavez was the game that i had as a kid right i lived in alabama and I remember, I don't know what year it was, but I remember that they had a bin in the middle of the $5 games or like the clearance games or whatever. And they were in box, right? They had the box in the manual and they were like, uh, they, they would reseal them and all that stuff. So they'd put their stickers in on. And um, so my mom told me that I could spend five bucks, probably my allowance or something and pick out a game. And the game that I chose was Chavez, not knowing that it was Spanish only. So, but you know what? As a kid, like you don't get very many opportunities to to get games. So it's not like I could be like, "Hey, mom, it's in Spanish. I can't read it. Let's take it back." Right. And you no, could return I games played back it. then. No, I played it like, and and I enjoyed it, and I got really far, and I really liked just like I didn't know what I was doing, but I could recognize it's like, okay, you have a fight, you win. You upgrade your character, you do a little training thing or whatever, and you keep going. I don't know. So it was, I still remember pulling it out. Like, that's a core memory for me is like pulling it out of the bin. Like, I can picture the box in my hand. Um, Like, I don't have a lot of memories like that, but it, so it has a special place for me and it's weird. And I didn't learn till like within the last few years that Reddick Bow Boxing was the same game. So, of course, I had to buy that. <laughs> yeah. I do have, I have a box in manual for Chavez on the way. I've been looking for years. They're so hard to find without paying exorbitant amounts of money. Really? I still spent quite a bit on it because they're really rare. Uh, and I wanted to get it in good shape because it's like my childhood game. So I think I spent like a 150 on the box in manual, but I bought it like three weeks ago, four weeks ago because it's shipping from Mexico and it hasn't gotten here yet. Mm. So um i will have that eventually it's just one of those games from my childhood you know some of those just hold a special place in your heart even if they're random games yeah for sure uh a couple of notes they have a chavez 2 there's no riddick bow 2 <laughs> but again with, with chavez 2 it's very similar to the first one it's a re-release of boxing legends of the ring for the u.s oh okay. same game okay so um, they released Chavez 2 on SNES and Genesis. Actually, Chavez 1's just on SNES. Um, and Chavez 1 and 2 have no relation to each other in the way that they play. Either. But they're both Spanish? Yes, I believe so. They're both Spanish only. So I actually have Boxing Legends of the Ring complete in box somewhere. I didn't even realize until researching this that they were the same game. Um, you had mentioned that fighters age realistically through the through the game. For yeah. the career and that holds true even if you're doing like exhibition stuff and if you choose like riddick bow in the riddick bow game 
over time you will get slow and retire and like you know it goes through that whole um scenario which i think the only way that i've ever played this game is through career and not through exhibition so i haven't done that stuff this was also a very highly rated game a lot of uh places gave it like 70s 80s 90s game pro gave it a five out of five i don't know like that for a boxing game that's kind of unheard of it, yeah. most there was a couple of quotes like saying it was the best boxing game on the system but this was also before uh super punch out as well so and and like super punch out i mean they don't really compete like they're not the same not the, the timing both, game yeah it's not the same kind of thing uh, like actual boxing fans would want to play riddick bow i think right yeah i don't know it's fun it's worth checking out um it is, you really is worth checking out and some time on it you, you gotta learn my my hands start hurting though because there's like you have to use all the buttons on the controller there's no like yeah <laughs> you're not, yeah and read the manual because I, di yeah. I didn't realize i wasn't blocking for like the first two times i played because yeah. i thought just like pulling back would make me block Mm. but no you gotta hit like both the shoulder buttons to block both the shoulder buttons because if you do just one it kind of rotates yeah the ring like you're rotating you know like i don't know pivoting yeah yeah because you can move your that. character around <clears throat> the ring like up down left right but you also you can rotate them to try and get a guy, the other guy into the corner which is yeah. kind of like there's a little mini map too kind of telling you where <laughs> yes in the ring you are because you know you're you're when you're fighting it's just like it's 2d side by side like a street fighter type scenario but yeah as you're kind of rotating it shows on the top little mini map where you're going yeah uh, I, I i'm really glad you picked this one honestly i, I would have never like just like started no. playing riddick bow out of the blue yeah no i think it's an underrated game for sure it's not it's not like an amazing game you're not gonna play it and be blown away but it's just one of those i was pretty blown away honestly <laughs> like I, I really enjoyed this game i don't i don't think i'll like it's not gonna become like a mainstay for me just because it takes so long to get through the matches. It does. It does. But I really enjoyed my time with it. Like, I really did. I'm surprised that you enjoyed it, but I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, <clears throat> I did. All right. Cool. Makes me happy. Uh, next week's game, we're going to stick with the realistic fighting. Okay? Oh. I really, because I, I like this, like, realistic boxing sim. And we're going to go with Primal Rage for the Super Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Which, just like, just like our forefathers when they were writing the Constitution, fighting dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So my, my, my copy's a little beat up, but I don't care. Yes, it's still my copy is complete, but it looks like a dinosaur got to mine as well. It's yeah, like maybe that's just how, the how they came. Just all beat to snot. <laughs> it's immersive. <laughs> yeah. It's immersion. Uh, but we this has got to be the game we've talked about the most on this and show. not done yet. Right? It's got to be. I feel like every other episode we start talking about Primal Rage for one reason or another. And I was like, kind of like, what should I pick? I'm perusing the stack of games. I'm like, it's got we gotta do primal rage eventually here it's a game you gotta hate to love or love to hate yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then after that we'll do clay fighter yeah we could, we could. <laughs> another realistic one <laughs> yeah yep. so i'll add that to i don't have any pickups this week jay so it's all you yeah, i got enough add i got enough for our... the both of us <laughs> All right, I'm. I'll try to go quickly, but there's a couple of bangers that. Um, yeah, I'll start with a banger. Actually, I got this from the retro game store. Um, I feel like I should cover up the price. It's a random game. You might not think it's a banger. Game Gear. Cosmic oh, Space Head for the Game Gear Complete in Box. It is mint. Everything is mint except for two things. One, the box has like a rip up here. And then the little plastic holder for the cart has like a break on it, mm. but everything you can, else you can replace those, right? There's nothing. This is what game specific about them. I don't know. You see that number in the front? Oof. That's a big and I think price. they actually un five hundred. I think bucks. they underpriced this. I so I had like I don't know. I had like north of seven hundred credit or something like that at the game store for trade ins that I've been doing. Um, 
it's this is price at 499 i got 10 percent off so it was 450 anyways um game year games complete in box are very hard to come by this is a game where if you look it up it sells complete in box extremely rarely like once or twice a year maybe <clears throat> and i just have this thing about having really hard to find things that you don't see like ever yeah and so that's why i picked this up like Games that you're not going to come across very often. Like, you know, I have all the Super Mario 64s and the Smash Bros. Complete in box and all that stuff, too. But I'm at just at the point where I'm like, I've never seen that before in, in Complete in box. The cart goes it, for yeah. over $100, just the cart. And um, I don't know if I'll ever come across it again. Mm. So if, if, I, if I have that feeling, like, I don't know if I'll ever see this again, a lot of times I end up picking it up because it's like, you know, when will I have the opportunity again? Anyways, so that that's the first one. I'll try to go quickly. I went to there was a little mini swap meet uh, in Portland, and I got some of these from that. I actually so this is the second copy that I got. I had gotten one that wasn't quite as good a condition, but Image Fight, which mm. is an Irem game. Yeah. Uh, there's a what is it called? Not Metal Gear, not Metal Solid. It's Metal something for NES. I can never remember Storm? the name of it. Metal Storm. Yes. So that's the Irem game that I know that I have now complete in box that i recently completed oh, but i got this it's, one too right yeah this one's not super expensive but i got it mint in box so it was a little bit more and i'm just going to sell the one that i picked up at the swap meet to pay for most of it mm. but i don't know i saw this pop up on ebay and i'm like that's another game that's very uncommon i like the box for it that's cool did they make that uh, game for the turbo graphics too i have no idea i've never played it just like stuff that I don't see very often. It's one of those Clash of Demon Head. Oh, yeah, that game is very... actually kind of neat. Yeah, Clash of Demon Head I got from the swap meet. Did we can't do remember that what I paid on for this show? It. Huh? No, we Did... haven't. We haven't done that yet. I think I got this without the manual for like, yeah, I want to say 40 or 50 bucks. And I happened to have the manual at home, so I completed it. Nice. Uh, this is one of my favorite childhood games as well. Excite Bike 64. Uh, it doesn't have the manual. I need to pick it up. It's not an expensive game, but it's kind of hard to find still. Like some of the cheap games are hard to find complete in box in good shape. Hmm. So uh, I picked that up. I've never played that. I don't think. It's fun. I enjoyed it. I would like to it's, check it out. I wonder if I could play it. It's on more of like, um, it's more of like a racing game, but you'd still do tricks and stuff. I think. Yeah. Kind of like a wave race kind of feel to it. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like that. If you can. Look at the pictures. I don't know. I thought it was good. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I would like to check it out. Good memories of that. I got Alien 3. I, I traded a guy some stuff. That's where the image fight came from as well. But this is like super minty in box as well. Alien is that the side-scroller game? Um, it looks like it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Kind of another uncommon really, really hard. Yeah, probably. LJN made that, huh? Yep. Uh, this is good. one that I got on eBay because I got a good deal on it. Uh, and it's a title game, which also very hard to find. Oh, yeah. Chase, Super Classic. Chase HQ. I've never played it. I've uh, only played the arcade. Pretty fun. Is it fun? Yeah, it was really fun. It's like yeah. uh, you play as, like I think if I'm thinking of the right game, you play as a cop who is trying to chase down criminals on the highway and you're trying to like bash them and shoot them off the road. Yeah, it's it just a high speed chase to run down crime. Yeah, it was fun. Excited to play that. The uh, actually, this is another one. This is a, a very uncommon rare game. It's called Faria. I've never heard of it. Looks the like only Zelda. thing that it doesn't have in here is the map, and I was kind of sad about it. Uh, yeah. But they they gave it to me for two fifty, which is pretty competitively priced. The cart goes for like one hundred twenty five to one hundred fifty by itself. Is it like a Zelda ish um, game? It is. Yeah, it does kind of look like a dungeon crawler for sure, actually. But this is just another one of those like super uncommon. I do I don't think I've ever actually seen it in the wild before. I don't think I've actually ever seen it in person. Oh, it's got a memory game save feature, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> no, Revolutionary. No passcodes for this guy. From Nixoff. But it's funny, it's like I never see this in person. I bought this. And then I literally the next booth that I went to to try to shop around a sealed fire red, he had another copy of this complete in box. 
And he's like, it's in better condition. And I'm like, let's see. And he opens it up. That one didn't have the map either. And he's like, oh, guess never mind. I was like, okay, so I don't feel so bad anymore. <laughs> um, so this game is a favorite of my childhood as well. And I just got the box and manual and everything today. I had the game Snowboard Kids. There's two games in this series. The first one, I'm pretty sure, is the one that I spent the most time with. But I also own the second one. The second one's a little bit more valuable, uncommon. But this game, it's like chibi characters snowboarding. And I just loved snowboarding games for the, for the N64. 1080, Twisted Edge, and this. So I got like, you know, I, I, I spent what it was worth for this because it's super good condition. And it was a game from my childhood. So I'm going to start setting stuff here. A couple more things, not too many. Uh, another N64 game. I went back. So Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine. For those who don't know, this is a blockbuster. I believe, I don't know if it's a 100% blockbuster exclusive, but it was like either blockbuster or you had to literally mail in to order it online wow. or something. Or like you had to like mail in your a check to get it sent to you or something like that. Like it was really rare to get it outside of blockbuster. The, my cop, This copy is a blockbuster copy. It has the blockbuster sticker. But super uncommon, really hard to find complete in the box, even harder to find it with all the inserts, which this one has. I went back. So the swap meet was Saturday, Sunday. I went there Saturday, did my deals, went home. And the thought of this bothered me so much that I found a bunch of stuff as trade material, like stuff from my collection. And I was like, I have to go back. I have to get it. I cannot not get it because it's like I've never seen it complete in box. It's just like really hard to find. And so I did. I went there and made a deal. Nice. I mean, it was it was fair. They gave me like 60 to 65 percent value on my stuff, which and they and the, but they priced this competitively. So it was fine. I traded in some like PS1 and Dreamcast stuff that I didn't really care about. Hmm. Um, what are these? These are a couple, I don't know why I've been getting good deals on 3DS and 2DS handhelds in box. I now have a bunch. I think I showed the Pokeball one that I got a while ago. Yeah. But that's I got the... Sword one is kind of neat looking. Oh, that's a Link the, Between Worlds. This is the Link Between World 3DS. And then this is the... Or no, Link, sorry. This is the, what is this? Majora's, Majora's Mask. Mask. Majora's Mask 3DS. And then this is more rare, actually. They're both, these are both rare and expensive. Yeah. But the Hyrule Edition, Zelda 2DS, yeah, I they think that sold one's it really to me. Neat. Yeah, it's got, it's like 3D printed. So it's like all that stuff is like three dimension. But I got it for less than the cost of a handheld only complete in box. And it came because the they game. listed it. No, because they said they, they listed it for sale because they couldn't get the memory card to work it was giving them an error and i was like i'm 100 percent confident i can figure that out so basically what had happened was they put a 64 gig card in here which natively they only support up to 32 and so and they have to be formatted a specific way so a 64 gig card can't even be formatted uh natively in windows you had to download i had to download a tool format it to fat 32 plug it back in and then it was like everything was freezing i'm like what the heck so i looked at it further you have to have a specific chunk size or whatever of the format too and so once i did that it took me like maybe an hour to figure it out and then i put it back in and it worked great so super nice complete inbox that's really sick that that's my favorite 3ds game i think is oh, link a link between, between worlds. worlds yeah it, it's so fantastic and then the last pickup was the thing that I got the first day. It was the end of my first day where I basically um, had sold some sealed games. And then I had cash in my hand to go buy this game. And I'm like, I could just leave. But this was another game where it was only the second time I've ever seen it in person in more than 10 years. Only the second time I'd ever seen it in person. The last time I saw it was like eight years ago. Shantae for the Game Boy Color, the original one, is now in my collection. For those nice. who don't know, this is a six to seven hundred dollar cart. Wow. Like. My wife was like, why? <laughs> <laughs> I 
Not why is it even that even the re-release? Like, why did are I buy expensive it? on that game? Some of them, yes. The, yeah. the first limited run wasn't it? The very first limited run game they ever did was Shantae or something. I don't know the answer. A question. really early one. That's the expensive one. The rest of them aren't. The Pirates Curse one and all that are not very expensive. But yeah, that's not even everything I've gotten. That's just the highlights. Yeah, those are pretty high highlights though. Those are some. There's banger games. more stuff I've gotten. <laughs> but. Again, to anybody who's new to the show, I have been buying enough to sell and get all of this stuff for quote unquote free. Um, other than spending my time flipping stuff, right? So, yeah, that's amazing. Those are some fucking big pickups, man. Nice job. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I got affirmation. Yeah. <laughs> my. My wife just looks at this stuff and she's like, why? Why are you? Why? Like, <laughs> um, She doesn't get like mad. She just doesn't understand. She's like, yeah. we don't. Why are you getting more stuff? <laughs> like, don't I you mean, have enough? Everybody's got stuff like that. I oh, there's one more. I forgot the surprise. There's one more thing. Uh, this just came in today, too. For those that are watching the video. This is the New York. Pokemon. Game Boy Advance, complete in box. I had the handheld in good condition, probably 8 out of 10 condition. I didn't have the box. Somebody sold the box, all the inserts, for $170. Wow. It's a, like, $800 box. Oh, wow. Uh, what I think happened was, this is so rare to come by. There was no recent sales on eBay. And the only recent sales of what looked like this box was the reshelled Singapore version for wow. like $200 in a box, in a fake box. So they priced the real box like the fake. around that. Yes. The current listings of this right now on eBay are like around 1000 Wow. Clean box. All right. <laughs> it's like, this is, no. <laughs> Anyways. All right. So next week we'll be talking <sighs> about Primal Rage or next episode. Sorry, I always say next week, but I mean next, next episode. We'll be talking Please. about Primal Rage. Jay, hopefully we'll have some more pickups to show us. I really, hopefully. I really like that, that link, a link to the path. Oh, link, yeah. Link between worlds. Sorry. Game Boy mm -hmm. Death, or. 2ds the, they call it the hyrule edition yeah yeah that's very cool blue one. um some more gaming news to talk about all all the stuff you heard from this episode except even better i guarantee it actually next it'll episode, be the same episode it's, it's like chavez and riddick Bo. is this episode we'll just we'll just <laughs> dub over the the episode number we'll just say it's episode <laughs> right. 80 and do the same show well no we'll, do, we'll call it 160 that way because it's twice as good <laughs> <laughs> All right, Microsoft. <laughs> all right, thank you all for listening. We'll see you in two weeks. Bye.